Okay, at 6.30, we will start the Kern Council of Government's Transportation Planning Policy Committee for Thursday, November 21st, and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, a nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ione? Present. Gorman? Present. Carr? Present. Couch? Crump? Present. Espinoza? Here. Cryer? Here. Peralt. Here. Reyes. Saldana. Bob Smith. I'm here. Phil Smith. Here. Solorio Reyes. Vandevord. Here. Vasquez. Warney. Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. We're good. So I will like to thank Mr. Crump for his many years of service. This is his last meeting for this go around. Who knows? Four years from now, he may be back. Two years. But we appreciate uh, how many years you've been on? Six overall. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for your service. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Do we have any public comments? Seeing none, I will move to the consent agenda. Same opportunity for public comment. Are there any public comments on the consent agenda? Seeing none, does any member wish to remove a consent Agenda item for separate consideration. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call vote, please. Saul? Aye. Gorman? Aye. Carr? Aye. Couch? Crump? Yes. Espinoza? Yes. Cryer? Yes. Peralt? Aye. Bob Smith? Yes. Phil Smith? Yes. Vandevoort? Yes. Warney? Yes. Very good. Caltrans report. We'll start with District 6, Mr. Peralt. Thank you. Um, yeah, good evening, uh, board. Uh, my name is Jim Peralt. I'm here um, for Michael Navarro. He, um, I think we had a conflict today because of the uh, Thanksgiving holiday. Fresno Cog was also meeting tonight, so he asked me to come to Kern Gog. So I'm, I'm glad to be here with you. I, I work under Mike um, as an office chief in his division over the local assistance and the PID program. So I'm um, glad to be here. It's been a while since I've been here um, to one of your board meetings. So um, yeah, I'd just like to go over just some of the, uh, well, some of the project, the Caltrans projects and give you status. Um, first off, just wanted to update on Clean California program. Um, Kern Cog on the local assistance side, local grant program was very successful um, with your local agencies with um, Clean California projects. Many of those have been completed. Um, most recently, I just attended a, the <coughs> ribbon cutting in Wasco. What a wonderful project that was. What a wonderful um, 
event uh, with the veterans there and beautiful project. And so that, that was nice to, to go see that work and the beautiful artwork there and uh, road improvements. Um, <clears throat> City of McFarland completed their project a long time ago. Um, Kern County had the Lost Hills and the Heritage Park project that were completed. Um, City of Shafter's working on um, their program. I think the last element they have in Shafter is to complete the Aquatic Center, which I know is a, a, a great project there as well. And then um, just, um, I, I know the Garza Circle project is, is still under construction. I understand there's a ribbon cutting that's planned to be done there um, in January. So. Um, and then I know under the cycle two, uh, Maricopa also got a project. Um, and so there's, um, you know, we, it's been a great program to, to beautify the state. Um, it'll be sunsetting, um, but you'll still see projects through 2027. Um, some active projects that I just wanted to kind of highlight and report on. Uh, the Kern Regional Transit Bus Shelter Project is, is still underway, installing new bus shelters. And um, those are anticipated. Uh, installation should be completed by um, the end of next month of December 2024. Um, with respect to the uh, road dia project on State Route 204, um, construction has begun on that. Um, and completion is expected in the spring, pending weather and completion of our work on that project. Um, the McFarland Delano project's ongoing with art installations and uh, work in Arvin is wrapping up this week with um, final um, hot mix asphalt patchwork. Shifting gears a little bit to the uh, Sustainable Transportation Planning Grants for the 24-25 cycle. Um, call for applications went out last month, October 24th. Um, applications are due January 22nd by 5 p.m. And um, if you plan on submitting a, a grant, um, the staff at Caltrans is willing to look at a... Um, a draft application and, and review it and give you some feedback. So if, if that's the case, you can reach out to either Lorena Mendibles or Christopher Young. Um, they just ask that you um, reach out to them before the end of December so that they can look at your application and give you some feedback. Wanted to report on the, um, I believe it's the 8th movement, uh, State Route 99 and, and 58, the ramp connector. Um, a TSEP application has been submitted for that. I believe the deadline to submit is tomorrow. The ask for that is about $40 million. Um, and also there's a concurrent um, local local um, program uh, ask of about $18 million for funding on that as well. Um, we anticipate that, uh, like I said, applications are due actually tomorrow. Um, staff recommendations for, um, for who's successful in that program is um, scheduled to, to come out in, in May of 2025 or, or June. Um, and then the CTC would vote on those projects at their June 2025 meeting. Um, so the, uh, the state route, uh, you're probably familiar with the state route 99, um, um, competitive, the multimodal corridor plan. Um, They've recently launched a website for that so that you can look at, you know, informational videos and recordings of some of the public meetings for that. Um, if you're interested in that, you can find it at the following website. It's uh, centralvalley99.com. Um, the State Route 46, uh, 43 intersection improvements, um, the projects to install a roundabout, it's been combined with an adjacent Route 46 roadway improvement. Um, the project's currently in the design phase and it's anticipated to begin construction in spring of 2025. Um, 
Also wanted to highlight the Delano State Route 155 rehab project. That project's rehabbing the pavement, uh, paving shoulders, standard curb gutter and sidewalk with a class two bike lane uh, within the whole project limit. Um, the project will be combined with the city's intersection improvements at State Route 155 and Lexington Street. Um, and the Lexington Street intersection improvements will include uh, dedicated left turn lanes on State Route 155 to address safety concerns. Um, that is scheduled to uh, design to be completed by um, June of 2025, and then it will go out for advertisement for construction. Um, I believe they're working on a a CNM agreement with uh, with the railroad that's anticipated in 2025. Sometimes those agreements uh, with the railroad can take some time. Um, next project to report on is the State Route 43 7th uh, Standard Road Roundabout, um, a cooperative agreement with the uh, City of Bakersfield, Shafter, and Kern County, and, and Caltrans was executed on um, in July of this year. Um, the co-op stipulates that uh, Shafter will do the design work, Kern County will be handling the right-of-way. Um, a kickoff meeting for that project was uh, held earlier this month on the 14th. Um, next project's the State Route 43 Santa Fe Roundabout. Um, this project's located in Shafter at Santa Fe and Los Angeles Avenue. It's in the design phase currently. Um, design is targeted to be completed next month. Um, the project requires permits from, um, from the Bureau of Reclamation, and so that's anticipated to delay construction until um, it looks like spring of 2026. Um, next project is the current 58 uh, rehab project. Uh, the project rehabilitates the westbound State Route 58 near Edison um, from 0.2 miles west of Tahoe Highway overcrossing to Caliente Creek. Um, Construction is anticipated to be completed on that project next month. Um, there's some additional work that's being done on that. Um, that is uh, a cap m project or some pavement work that um that will take care of um, some additional pavement work the project's scheduled to be um, designed in by october of 27 um, and this project will also take care of the weight in motion station on the east eastbound uh, direction um, the, the environmental phase for that's about 30% complete and it's expected to be completed um, in 2026. Let's see, I just have a few more projects to report on. Um, California Aqueduct 166 Bridge Rehabilitation. Um, the contract for that project was awarded to Granite Construction. There will be a delayed start um, as the contractor pursues encroachment permits with the uh, Department of Water Resources. So we're looking at um, a July-August 2025 start date um, and be finished by the end of 2025. Uh, next project is the Maricopa Highway. Uh, uh, Cap M project. Um, this project will rehabilitate about nine miles of pavement from State Route 33 to Capello Street. Um, project is uh, uh, Griffith is the contractor. Project is uh, in construction, and all the road closures have been complete. And hoping that the project will be completed in January of 2025. So just a couple months out. Um, next project is the Pumpkin uh, Center Rehab Project um, on State Route 119 near Pumpkin Center from Ash Road to uh, 119 and 99. 
the project's currently in the design and right away phase and um, it's targeted to, for design to be completed in um, also in January of 2025 so just a couple <coughs> months out on that um, next project's morning drive rehab project um, it's currently under construction about 80 percent complete um, the remaining work is the electrical, the striping, erosion control, and roadway signs, and construction is expected to be completed there January of 2025 as well. And then just two more projects. Um, Wheat Patch Highway Rehab Project. Um, project is currently in um, design and right-of-way phase. And it's expected to uh, to be done next week in terms of design and, and right away completion. So it should be able to go out and be advertised. Um, the Arvin Cap M project um, design is in progress, and with the expect to advertise that to the fall of next year, 2025. And then lastly, the um, current 33 project. This project consists of rehabbing about 19 miles of, of roadway from uh, McKittrick, uh, north of McKittrick from Simric Wash to um, south of Route 46. Construction started in September. Um, it's got an estimated uh, of 200 working days of construction with completion in um, in May of 2026. It's uh, and it's in uh, winter suspension right now until April of of next year. So that is all I have from District Six. Are there are there any questions for me that I'll I'll try to answer? Any questions for Mr. I have a couple if nobody else does on the eighth movement appreciate the TSEP application but we did think Caltrans was just gonna take care of that with or without so we still hope that <laughs> yeah I've I, I've heard that and um, and I'm aware of that and um, that's the last bow on a, on a very large right under understand long -term project. so I will, um, I'll, 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 I'll let Michael know and, um, and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll see what we can find out we'll for make you. Make that happen one way or the other. And also, uh, somewhat related is when that happens, then uh, eastbound Rosedale Highway, which is still Caltrans Mohawk to 99. Caltrans did a good job getting uh, Bicycle access westbound underneath 99, but nothing's happened eastbound, and that needs to happen while Caltrans owns it. We've talked to Michael. Yeah, and, I, I, yeah, and I, I've also talked with Michael about that as well, and John Liu, and I know that they're still, you know, looking at that and looking at options. Um, and so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there'll be, yeah, th th they're, they're aware of, of, of the need and the desire and... Okay. And so um, appreciate that. Yeah. And then uh, you mentioned the, the Garces Circle Clean California. And this is something to add on, but I was up in Sacramento and walked under the I-5 to Old Town, and you know they play the uh, classical music in order to keep the homeless out a little bit. And I think that would be a good addition to the Garces Circle project because we do have. A homeless problem there and you know 204 goes over the top there so it's a very similar situation okay and i i wasn't aware of that so they so the, what they just play some background music and and they don't they it's, don't care it's for classical it music and it's loud enough and you know classical music rises right. and you know so it, it's disruptive yes okay yeah I had not, I wasn't aware that they were doing, and where do you say they're doing that up in Sacramento? It's the um, pedestrian it, access underneath I-5 to uh, Old Town, or to Old Town from the mall, from oh, the okay. Capitol Mall, yeah. And is is Caltrans the one that plays the music? I do you know, assumed or it because it's right under it's, uh, it's there. Okay. Five. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a that's a creative idea yeah. and, and something that I wasn't aware of, and so yeah, I'll I'll take that back and um, appreciate it and see what we can do. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. 
Uh, that's all I have. So, District 9, Ms. Carr. Good evening. I will hope to be a little briefer. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're glad all of that stuff's going on. <laughs> we have less. <laughs> Uh, first of all, the um, update on the Olancha Cartago uh, project. Uh, they're doing another uh, traffic switch, and it's so if you're traveling up to Bishop and uh, Mammoth Lakes, be aware that the northbound traffic on US 395 through the Olancha Cartago area will switch the new northbound lanes, and it'll be done this week. I did drive down on the southbound lanes tonight, and it looked like they were still doing the last little bit of work on the northbound lane, so I'm hazarding from a, a planner perspective that uh, it will be done shortly. And if you're interested, they have the new, uh, the new map on our uh, District 9 internet page. If you go down towards the middle of the page, there's all the projects listed, and you just click on Olancha Cartago, and it, you, you can see the map. Next, uh, if you're traveling on 58 towards Barstow and you need to stop the, um, due to an issue with the water pumps, the eastbound Boron rest area is unfortunately closed until further notice. Uh, but the westbound uh, rest area at Boron is still open. The, um, there was a State Route 58 uh, digouts pro project, the Kern digouts project. It was the, uh, the it was completed at the beginning of November, um, and you have a uh, there will be a second digouts project on 58, and it, but it's scheduled uh, for the summer of 2025. Then um, Cash Creek and the Keen Scales uh, changeable message sign or CMS project. This project is replacing or adding two changeable message sign boards on State Route 58 at Cache Creek and the Keene Scales. The crews so far have removed the old signs at Hart Flat Road and the Truck Scales, and then the new sign at the Truck Scales may be erected next week, and the second sign is expected to be in place before Christmas, of course, pending on our weather, so, but it will be soon. And uh, speaking of weather, uh, we hope that uh, it will be clear weather next week for the traveling the Tehachapi grade for Thanksgiving. But as we know, we have to anticipate storm and seasonal closures. Uh, but please, uh, if this occurs, look to our um, the Caltrans uh, traffic advisories, social media, quick maps, because uh, that will help you, you know, determine your travel plans. Uh, again, 58, the Median Safety Devices Project. And this project is repairing median safety devices in the Tehachapi area on 58. And, but construction on this project is anticipated to wrap up uh, very soon, within, by the end of November, again, pending weather. The Mojave Sidewalk Construction Project, that was on State Route 14 from the Oak Creek Road overcrossing to just north of the Los Angeles uh, DWP office in Mojave, and this project has been completed. Uh, projects in the in process, there's the Freeman Safety Project, the, um, uh, the Environmental Study Request has been submitted, and uh, it, if you need more information, I can give you that. But it's uh, specifically, it's widening the shoulders in the area to eight feet, uh, replacing culverts, and um, reestablish drainage ditches, and upgrade the bridge rails on the Freeman Gulch Bridge. The second project in process is Rosamond Rehab. So that's, you know, the rest of 14 being rehab from uh, where it ended, so it was just north of Rosamond all the way to the, the LA um, uh, boundary. And that is also uh, environmental study request has been submitted. And it uh, construction for that project will begin in 2027 and should last, oh, it'll be about a year. So it'll be a lengthy project. And, oh, one more. The, um, so no more projects, but as um, Jim mentioned about grant support for the uh, Sustainable Transportation Planning Grant, 
this would be uh, for, for East Kern uh, County, you know, county projects in East Kern or for Ridgecrest, the city of California City and Tehachapi City. If you have a project that you want, you know, a grant application that you'd like us to review, Again, as, uh, as uh, Jim mentioned, if you could get us the drafts by the end of December or even the beginning, the first week of January, they're due January 22nd. So the sooner you get them to us or if you want to talk over your project idea or any application, you know, uh, you know any roadblocks that your bottlenecks you're having, please reach out to us. You can reach out to me and, I can, and we can set up a meeting or, uh, and, or edit your draft. Review and it, review it. Thank you. And that is it. Are there any questions? Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Carr? No. Mr. Smith, you can't let it slide by. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Phil. I'll go for right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Executive Director's report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Uh, I have a lot of people to thank um, for the October 17th and 18th transportation, California Transportation Committee meeting in Bakersfield. As many of you know, it was the first time the CTC ever came to Bakersfield. Great success. Um, as Jim mentioned, we will know um, in May whether uh, we receive about $40 million, and uh, I do expect to receive something. Keep your fingers crossed. But I'd, I'd like to personally thank Chairman Smith, um, Supervisor Couch, <coughs> uh, Councilman Phil Smith, Mayor Saul Ion, City of Bakersfield, City of Tehachapi, wonderful company, the gentleman behind the scenes at KGov who helped out with the meeting behind the scenes, all of the current COG staff. Um, specifically Ben. Ben, you handled all the train arrangements. Thank you. Rob, Rob helped with that. Becky, who's not here tonight. Suzanne, to my right. Becky and Suzanne helped with the dinner and with the reception. Victoria helped out on, on many of the attendees. Raquel, Caesar, the entire 1987 McFarland State Cross Country championship team, including my friend uh, Thomas Baez and now elected official Danny Diaz, especially for what, what you did one-on-one um, -on -one with Tanisha and Carl. That is going to pay huge dividends, Mayor, and what you did at the meeting Friday morning that was very, very well received. Uh, couldn't, have, couldn't have gone any better. The Kern County Sheriff's Office provided helicopters. Kern County Fire Department also provided helicopters. And I know there's, there are many people who I missed. I apologize for missing you. But great job to everyone that was involved. Um, don't look forward to doing it again. But if we can score $40 million every time we pull this off, uh, we'll be glad to do it again. The CTC is meeting next month on the 5th and 6th in Riverside. I will attend at least one, one day of those meetings, and I'll touch bases with Carl, Tanisha, and Leanne, and others. If any, any of you are interested in going down just there and back in one day, let me know. We will likely do that on Thursday. Uh, had our most of our usual meetings um, over the past month. Actually, it's been two months since we last met. State Route 99 and State Route 58, that eighth movement design and right-of-way con um, contract was awarded last night by the City of Bakersfield. Thank you, Chairman Smith. Uh, seven standard and 43 meetings continue every month. Thank you to all parties to that. And Wonderful Corporation is also a party to that. Um, not a party to the official agreement, but they, they are s certainly offering assistance and offering funds to the city of Shafter to make that important roundabout happen. Uh, the State Route 46 uh, monthly status meetings have wrapped up now that the construction is finished, but Raquel is continuing to have meetings to wrap up all the paperwork and make sure we spend every single penny that uh, 
Bill Thomas um, brought to us. Truck climbing lanes on State Route 58, location two in District 9. We have a meeting coming up with uh, Senator Grove and management of District 9 and the city of Tatchby. We haven't set a date. And we continue to attend the State 119 uh, long-term planning meetings. Subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman and board members, that concludes my report. Thank you, Director Hakimi, and thank you very much for your planning and, and execution of the CTC visit. And I sat in a lot of the meetings and did a very good job of uh, letting our wants and needs be known. And, and I just went to a CalCog meeting last week, and uh, many people from the state very impressed. We raised the bar for the CTC visit. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Chairman. I, I forgot to mention BNS, Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad and Union Pacific took us on a once in a lifetime, literally, even though I've done it twice, uh, mm -hmm. trip. But for, 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 for many people, for the vast majority of the people who've done that, it's a once in a lifetime experience. And I know several of you may have comments on that. Um, I've talked extensively to BNSF and um, Union Pacific. Um, both before, during, and after that trip, and they're more than willing to do it again if um, if we're going to attract um, some more investment, which is what the purpose of us hosting the meeting was all about. Thank you. Any questions for the director? Mr. Smith. For Aaron or District 9, we were hoping to get some additional funding for the design work of the second segment of the truck climbing lanes from that last CTC meeting, did we get that? Or can you comment? Wasn't there some additional funding being requested for design work? Uh, 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 Councilman Smith, there, there, is, there is no money left on the initial COVID money that we got right at the end of the first Trump administration. I think that's, uh, there was some cost savings that District 9 had um, with respect to the environmental document that they did, but unfortunately there there is nothing left. The, the little bit that we had, we had uh, we had no choice but to move it quickly on to 46, uh, which is also a project in, that's important to to the whole county. But there there is no uh, money left to do design. <clears throat> what we're pursuing um, on the Location one, which is in District Six, is next would be an environmental document because we still don't have an environmental document for that section. All right, thank you, Chair. Next, yes. make Sir, a I comment, Aaron. I just want to commend your staff, yourself, for uh, executing that plan. The three days were exceptional. Uh, we represented Kern County well. We're still getting a lot of emails and comments from CTC, so uh, the message was delivered. Good job on on the presentation. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you. We will adjourn the Transportation Policy Committee and open the Kern Council of Governments meeting. Same roll call? Yes, sir. Same. Thank you. Uh, same rules on public comments. Are there any public comments for this meeting? Seeing none, we'll move to the consent agenda. Any public comments for the consent agenda? Yes. Please come to the Please microphone. come to the microphone. Oh, ah, yes. I was like this. I just had a funny little question for my report. <laughs> this one? Yes. So what's the 40, for people who are new to listening in on these, what's the 40 million specifically for and why are we celebrating it? Which obviously 40 million, yay. But like why would we... What specifically is it going to do to help out us or Kern County? I'll give so I can opinion, write it down. And then I'll give Mr. Hakimi the existing movement from south and north 99 to 58 and going west on 58. You have to go Rosedale Highway, then Mohawk. Mm -hmm. This new movement, the 7th and 8th movements, takes out 
Rosedale Highway and Mohawk, and you can do it right at the interchange. Okay. So it reduces congestion. It reduces traffic on what are essentially local arterials, and it therefore reduces air pollution. Perfect. Anything you'd like to add? Uh, let me let me add something before the chair. Um, for underserved communities like such as McFarland, rural uh, areas of Sporty Million, which might not be, but it presents the challenges that we have with the revenue and the infrastructure that's completely outdated, or the overpasses and stuff. So it brings the um, attention to a lot of where this funding is going. Would you feel like that is the most beneficial thing that you're looking forward to and all of it like when in terms of congestion traffic absolutely. reducing air pollution that would be your most important absolutely i mean we don't we don't have enough lanes where if there's an accident we live we, we live in the central valley where the temperature could go up to 110 degrees mm -hmm. you think semi trucks are turning off their emissions when it's that hot mm. so it's not only that but if you if you think about it um it's it's going to generate revenue bring investments and for better jobs, better quality of life for all of Kern County residents. Well, that clears it up, and congratulations on that, y'all. Thank, Thank you. you. Could you state your name for the record? Oh, Maria Jackson. Thank you. So, so, so to be clear, Mr. Chairman, and, and everyone who's listening, the $40 million, or it's actually 39, is not in hand yet. We're asking for it. We have uh, multiple commitments from Caltrans that they're supportive, committed, uh, but uh, what I want to see is, is is dollars, and and what I'm sure what all of you want to see is dollars. Um, Councilman Smith, there w there was an item during the the um, October CTC meeting related to design on the truck on the truck climbing lanes location two, but it was it's not not the not location one. It was an additional ten million dollars to cover cost overruns. That's what I was asking for oh, number two. Got it. Yes. Yes, that was a that was approved. Thank you. I was going to ask later because I thought we had that. <laughs> so, all right. Very good. Uh, any other public comments? And we're on consent agenda. Public comments for the consent agenda. Seeing none. Does any member wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? Second. Roll call vote, please. Ion. Aye. Gorman. Skip, you're on mute. Forgive me. Yes. Thank you. Crump? Yes. Cryer? Yes. Bob Smith? Yes. Phil Smith? Yes. Good. Thank yeah, you. Sorry. <laughs> uh, very good. Executive Director's report. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman. Um, as as we move into our regional awards uh, time of the year, I'll go over it in a second. But um, regional award nominations are due December second, as we usually do. Staff will. Uh, screen those, take a look at them, come up with some recommendations, and then uh, present them to a ad hoc committee. And if necessary, that ad hoc committee can meet in on December 19th. We are not having a, a full board meeting. So my request to you uh, now is do we have any members who um, would like to volunteer to be part of that regional awards committee? meeting that may meet on December 19th. I'll volunteer. Thank you, Arshal. I'll be in. Thank you. And Phil. Thank you, gentlemen. In your, in your folder this evening, Mr. Chairman, is a timeline covering November and December the flyer for the regional awards 
and again they are due they are due December 2nd it's only a few weeks from now as you know the current active transportation Alliance November 24 community rides flyer and the December 2024 community rides flyer subject to any of your questions mr. chairman or board members that concludes my report any questions? Very good. And then we will move to closed session. Coming back from closed session, and there's no recordable action. And with that, we will adjourn regular meeting.